Hey guys, what is up? I'm Ian the Joker Knot, and uh, today we're going to be showing how to make a pretty sweet PVC bow. Here's one that I've made a couple of weeks ago. It's about a 30 pound draw, but it's a uh, very cool bow. It has a good long draw. The one we're going to be making today is not exactly a recurve bow, it's just a little bit simpler, which has some pros and cons to it. So, before we get into the actual uh, making and forming of the bow itself, we have to make a couple of um, kind of like tool aids. They are not 100% necessary to make this bow, but they will make this build easier, and really, it'll make building almost any PVC bow easier. Um, the first tool we're going to need is to, it's just something to put the PVC pipe into while we're heating it up. So you could just use a piece of angle iron. I'm going to do the uh, slightly cheaper and I think better route, which is uh, just slitting a piece of PVC down the middle and then we can actually wrap that so we'll have a nice U shape. As you see me do something a specific way on this channel, doesn't mean that it is um, the best way or the safest way. Uh, it just happens to be the way that works well for me, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend all of these techniques for anybody. You have to be the one to really make the call what you are um, comfortable with doing and what your competency level in making things is. All we're going to do is uh, go ahead and line this with some aluminum foil just so we can put the pipe in there uh, when we're trying to heat it up and it will help heat more of the surface area and make it be a little bit more even. Now that we've got our uh, heating trough finished up, the next thing that we need to make before we start building the bow itself is a jig. Now a jig, uh, when you're making something, is anything that you just kind of throw together to help you do something uh, repeatedly. So you could make a jig that would help you cut a piece of wood into a specific shape or length repeatedly and easily. Uh, this, however, we're going to be making is a flattening jig. And so it's going to help us uh, flatten both of the limbs on this bow specifically and any bows that we make in the future uh, to the same angle, to the same flatness. We're just going to go ahead and make uh, one mark on our 2x4 at 30 inches and another mark at 70 inches and just cut those two pieces. But the next thing is we need to make a couple of these little uh, wood offcuts. I ended up with one, but I need three more. Alright, here are our four uh, support pieces. I went ahead and just kind of eyeballed all of them, but they are uh, pretty close. I'd say maybe about a centimeter off. When you notice that your uh, workstation is getting a little bit dirty, you may be tempted to kind of uh, want to clean or even vacuum it up. Don't give in to those kind of thoughts. Uh, this is so such multifaceted stuff. A lot of people just throw it away. They don't even think about it. You know, it's really good if you need to like write some people some uh, kind of cryptic messages like this. Uh, you know, it also it's just really good for the lungs. So I prefer to just to you know get as much in the air as possible. You know, if you feel like you do need to clear, create a space. We take the 40-inch uh, piece here, and uh, we are going to set up these smaller supports as um, basically a little track for the top piece. So these don't have to be um, at any super specific distance, as long as one end has uh, them very close to where the edge of the wood is, back over here, and the other end has a little bit of space, as you can see. Now I'll explain why that's important in a minute, but for now, you're just going to have to trust me. So you want them to be kind of close together. Mine are probably about mm, 18 inches apart. Alright, so... The moment of truth is here. Uh, basically, all we're going to do is see if our shorter piece of wood, remember this was the 30-inch uh, the long piece, it's the top piece, if it can actually slide in between the others. And we did a good job. So we've got two holes in the corners of this piece of wood. Now we've got these uh, little bolt assemblies here. Um, and really the only important thing here is that 
you've got one uh, nut down near the head which is acting as a stopper and you're going to have another nut on the other end that is acting as just kind of like a, uh, a holder. So you're going to take the nut and you're going to put it through a piece of wood assuming that you drilled the right size hole. Alright, we did. So you can see that this nut that is on the bottom is controlling how far this um, piece of wood is going to be held off of the jig. Uh, whenever we heat up our piece of uh, PVC for the boat, we're only going to heat up one limb at a time. So the limb will go down with the end meeting just at or just before uh, this side that has the brace on it. Um, the other side, we want to give enough room that it can hang off the edge a little bit here and have some support um, for if we've heated a little bit too far so it's not going to get warped or out of position. We're going to put this other piece of wood on top of it that has these spacers so it doesn't flatten it so much at one end but it's going to flatten it pretty much completely at the other end and we're going to push down real hard and it's going to make us a nice thin bow limb. Now that we've got the uh, jig making and general tomfoolery out of the way, we can head right into making this bow. And the first thing we're going to have to do is cut ourselves a piece of PVC. Now the piece of PVC you should use is uh, probably going to be between the lengths of 44 inches and 50 inches. And it should be at least uh, schedule 40 3 quarter inch PVC. Um, schedule 40 is a little bit thicker, so it's going to be a little bit stronger. And uh, obviously, the thicker the diameter of the pipe is, the stronger the draw weight will be on the bow. This one I'm shooting for will probably be a little bit on the lighter side, maybe 25 pounds, maybe 30 at the most. Uh, bow length, what should you choose? Now, you're probably thinking, well, I'm a pretty strong guy. You know, I should uh, go for a big, uh, long bow, right? Because length is everything, if you know what I'm saying. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You're wrong. The longer your bow limbs are, the longer the draw is going to be. Now to a point this is good, uh, but after you get up to about you know a 30 inch draw, you've pretty much reached the max of what normal archery arrows are. So at that point um, it's going to be unwieldy to shoot and you're also just not going to literally be able to draw back the bow any further, which means that the optimum strength is actually past where the bow is made to go. We are going to be using a uh, piece of 47 inch uh, inches of schedule 40 three quarter inch PVC. Before we start heating the bow we need to just put a couple of marks on it. Um, you're gonna have to find wherever your center point is. Mine is at about 23 and a half inches and then you're gonna make uh, one mark on either side of that that um, just between two and three inches and basically this part is gonna be um, your handle portion. So as long as you feel like you've got a good handle on it um, that's what's most important. We're going to start heating up the bow and we're going to go uh, long, smooth motions. And you want to go just a little bit past where this mark is because um, if you only go right to it, you're probably not going to actually be able to flatten that portion. So you want to go a little bit further and if you have some, you're really going to probably want to put on some um, thick gloves because it can get pretty hot. So now that it's uh, pretty nice and soft, we're going to put it on here kind of as quick as we can, put the edge all the way up um, to the end here, try and make it as straight as we can be, we don't want it to be bent, and then we need to get this thing on before it starts to cool off, and we're going to put the end of this just right past where our uh, mark was, and then I'm going to step on it. Uh, very nice taper onto a nice flat end right there. Um, at this point, this is still a little bit hot, so you want to be careful when you're handling it. And also, um, you don't want to test its bend strength until it's completely cool, otherwise it may actually hold some of that bend. Um, but basically, we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Just make sure that whatever your marks were, um, if you kept them up on the top or the bottom, do it the same way for the second limb, because even though it's um, a pretty even bend. You don't want to have one kind of bend down and the other one bend up. So Whenever you're working on a bow or a project like this, it's always good to have some inspiration.
wow we you can uh, see what we were going for there and uh, I think it'll do and he, we did manage to keep it pretty pretty nice and straight um, just heat up right on the edges of the handle a little bit and just give it a tiny bit of a curve backwards. Believe it or not, at this point we are actually done with the heat forming on this bow. Um, like I said, it's a little bit of a simpler one than my uh, previous version. It's not a true recurve, it's just a different style of bow. If you do want to make a recurve, um, basically you need to come up with a little bit more of a shape like this where the bow actually curves forwards, has a little bit of a uh, bow to it, and then very importantly the end of the limbs have to be folded onto themselves and then bent uh, upwards so that it has that distinctive shape and gives it a little bit more power. Gonna cut out a shape like so, um, and basically the string is actually going to go into these little um, knocks that we're going to cut out. This piece doesn't even actually need to come off, it just makes it look a little bit prettier. is essentially finished. Um, it's definitely shootable. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. You could paint it, make it look pretty. You could add an error rest. You could add a knock point. All those things are going to make it a little bit easier, maybe more fun to shoot. But really, it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and give it a, uh, a shot here. Got some 30-inch arrows. I also have a couple shorter ones. But uh, we'll see. I don't know if my aim's going to be very good because I haven't really tested this one yet. So well, let's give it a try. I was actually going for something that was going to be a little bit lighter draw than this. I think this may be as strong, if not stronger, than my other bow, especially when you go to full 30-inch uh, draw. I think that's just because it's um, kind of a short bow length, and so when you go to actually pull it past, you know, maybe 26 inches, it actually starts to up the poundage really fast. So I've got uh, 35 pounds of exercise weights in there. Not the most safe thing to do, honestly, but I've got the arrow on here as a reference point for how much uh, of the draw weight it takes to get to the end of the arrow. So we're just going to pull up on the bow. And you can see that we are now off the ground and there's still a good you know, three or four inches left on the arrow. I'd never actually made this style of PVC bow before. I'd only ever made a recurve. Um, I just assumed from some things that I had read that it would be a little bit less strong. Um, so if you want to shoot short arrows or have a really, you know, high, maybe 40 pound draw, maybe even 45 pounds if you go all the way back, then, uh, you know, keep it as is, keep it nice and short, short bow. If you want it to be a little bit lighter draw weight or have a longer uh, draw length, yeah, just go ahead and make the bow itself out of a longer piece of PVC and you'll be ready to go. I just want to say thank you so much for checking out this video. Um, hopefully it was entertaining or helpful if you want to make one of these for yourself. I definitely have plans to make some more uh, detailed, more 
um, pretty looking, more elaborate bow designs in the future to make some that are based off of movie and video game characters. But I wanted to make a very simple, straightforward, functional bow build first, just so that um, when I go and make and um, shoot those bows in the future, I can always refer people back to this video for, so that you can have the basics of how to make a jig, how heating works, the, um, so I won't have to go over as much detail and can focus more on the aesthetic of your... Thanks again so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up below and comment if you have a suggestion for a future bow or just weapon build from a video game or anything else that you'd like to see. Subscribe for future videos and I hope to see you in the next one.